Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. From WRFM Music, featuring Klaus Ogerman, Miracle of Miracles, Jerry Vale singing Where is the Love, and Andre Kostelanitz, Lullaby of Broadway, then Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed, All I Ever Need is You, followed by Blue Moon, The Astro Strings. In the news at 5.56, Watergate watchers in Washington are wondering today whether a second subpoena will drop on the White House doorstep. President Nixon bowed to subpoena pressure Friday evening by turning over Watergate material to Special Prosecutor Leon Jaworski after insisting for weeks that Jaworski already had enough information for his investigation. But another demand for additional Watergate material remains hanging, the one by the House Judiciary Committee, which is investigating possible impeachment of the president. Nixon is still holding that information, even though the House Committee says it needs it. The president is spending the weekend at his Key Biscayne uh, retreat in Florida. A White House spokesman said he'll take it easy. He has one scheduled conference, and it probably will center around money. Well, there's some encouraging economic news today. Labor Secretary Brennan thinks there soon will be substantial reduction in the unemployment caused by the energy crisis. And an Agriculture Department report indicates prices are coming down. Negotiators for the Transit Authority and the Transport Workers Union worked through the night opening weekend crunch sessions against a 5 a.m. Monday strike deadline. The preceding weeks of negotiations have centered on side and benefit issues and economic presentations with the participation of a three-man mediation panel. As is traditional in the city's transit negotiations, the actual money does not get onto the bargaining table until the final day or two, but by that time, both sides and the public have a fair idea of what's involved. The union also wants a cost-of-living escalator, which could prove a key final hour stumbling block to the talks, since municipal budgets lack the flexibility to handle the kind of sudden cost fluctuations it could generate. Environmentalists have hailed a city decision prohibiting Con Ed from burning coal for power after Sunday, leaving the utility with a decision to make on what it'll do with 177,000 tons of coal that is stockpiled. Con Ed had applied for an extension of its authorization to burn coal at its Arthur Kill plant on Staten Island and for permission to start burning coal at its Ravenswood plant in Queens. The power company got the right to start burning coal at Ravenswood last December because of the fuel shortage, but did not start doing so until a week ago. A round-the-clock 3% voltage gut imposed across New York State in December has been lifted because the electric companies report they now have enough fuel oil. The Public Service Commission, which regulates the utilities, announced the cutback was lifted Friday at the request of the companies. Sunday will be the first day since February 26th when all New York motorists will be able to buy gasoline regardless of their license plate numbers. However, the odd-even rationing system will again be effective on Monday. Two weeks ago, Governor Wilson suspended the odd-even rules for the 31st day of any month. He explained the suspension was designed to smooth operation of the rationing system. Well, the threat of a pre-dawn tornado tormented the south this morning as New Yorkers were digging out of a spring storm which piled snow six inches high in some suburbs. The metropolitan area, in the metropolitan area, commuter trains ran late and traffic on bridges was backed up for miles last night because of icy conditions. The sanitation department has advised that alternate side of the street parking from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. this morning or from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. will be suspended in all boroughs today. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger has begun the complicated job of trying to separate the Syrian and Israeli forces along the Golan Heights. That effort began and will continue in Washington. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Dayan called on Kissinger yesterday to present him with the initial Israeli proposals for withdrawal and creation of buffer zones and safeguards. Almost four years after it all happened, a federal grand jury has returned indictments in the Kent State killings. Those killings took place on May 4, 1970, when Ohio National Guardsmen were sent to the uh, Kent State campus, where demonstrations were taking place to protest the Vietnam War. 
Mariner 10, that tiny spacecraft loaded with cameras and instruments, apparently has done a terrific job in snooping on the planet Mercury, some 91 million miles out in space. It swooped down to within 465 miles of Mercury and found it to be, in the words of a scientist at the Caltech lab where material is being analyzed, a place you wouldn't want to visit, let alone live. In sports, the NBA Knicks last night beat the Capitol Bullets 102 to 91 in the first game of the best of seven series in the Eastern Conference semifinals. And the ABA Nets won the first game of their best of seven East Division semifinal with the Virginia Squires. That score, the Nets 108, the Squires 96. In hockey action tonight, both the NHL Rangers and the NHL Islanders are in Canada. The Rangers play the Maple Leafs at Toronto while the Islanders go against the Canucks at Vancouver. It's 34 degrees, and you can expect rainy and windy weather today, with rain becoming heavy at times later today. Temperatures rising into the 40s early this afternoon, and briefly into the 50s later this afternoon. Rain tapering off and ending during the night, the low 35 to 40. Fair weather tomorrow, the high around 50. And the outlook for Monday, partly cloudy with near-seasonable temperatures. The wind is now from the east at 18, humidity 96. We have rain this morning and 34 degrees. This is Larry Yant for WRFM News. Stereo 105. All day, all night, all music. WRFM, New York.